Okay, let's let's do it. Today we're going to talk about uh, prophesying with instruments, and um, I'm going to read uh, one of my favorite. I know I'm always saying these are one of some of my favorite scriptures, but um, one of my favorite scriptures on the prophetic is found in First Chronicles chapter 25. It says in verse number one, you can write these down, look at them. Uh, uh, First Chronicles chapter 25 verses one through five. It says, moreover, David and the captains of the host separated to the service of the sons of Asaph and of Heman and of Jedathan. And I have a book called The Spirit of Asaph taken from basically this, this particular chapter. It's on worship, prophetic worship. You can also get that at Amazon.com. I believe you have to download it electronically. The Spirit of Asaph raising up a new generation of prophetic worshipers. Three families are mentioned here. Uh, the family of Asaph, the family of Heman, and the family of Jedathan. These three fathers were Levites. They were also had families that were prophetic, and they were also musicians. It says, who should prophesy with harps, with psalteries, uh, and with symbols, and the number of the workmen according to their service was, verse 2 talks about the sons of Asaph, and it says they prophesy according to the order of the king of Jedathan. It mentions his sons who prophesy, they under, under the hands of their father, who prophesy with a harp to give thanks and praise to the Lord. And then the sons of Heman, it mentions those in verse 4. And um, and then in verse 5, all these were the sons of Heman, the king's seer in the words of God. So Heman was one of David's seers, one of David's prophets, who was called a seer. Remember in scripture, a seer was also a prophet. I don't know if there's teaching there's a difference between a seer and a prophet, but scripturally there's not. Uh, they, uh, before they were called prophets, they were called seers. And I don't believe you can be a prophet without seeing. So I don't make the distinction between there's some prophets that are seers and there's some that are not. All prophets should be able to see and are called seers. And um, so Heman uh, is one of the king's seers. We know about Nathan being a seer, but there were other seers around David. David was a prophet, and it says that they prophesied with musical instruments. So David puts the ark of God, he brings it to Mount Zion, puts it under a tent, and he establishes three families, prophetic families, to worship 24 hours a day. Each of them took eight-hour shifts, three eight-hour shifts, Asaph, Heman, and Jedathan, and they prophesied with musical instruments. So musical instruments are very important in the prophetic. And often, at least in our, in our experience in, at Crusaders, a lot of our prophetic, uh, especially corporate prophecy, it comes during the worship time. When the musicians are playing, the spirit of prophecy comes, and we have a lot of corporate prophecy. We, we sing prophetic songs. Now, this is primarily the way David prophesied. We don't really see instances of David just going around giving people words. David prophesied on the harp. He was a musician. He's called the sweet psalmist of Israel. He prophesied with songs. So you can you can you can speak prophecies or you can sing them. And uh, we know the book of Psalms is filled with prophetic utterances that David spoke and they were put to music. So anointed minstrels and anointed psalm, uh, anointed psalmists work together. Sometimes the minstrel can actually sing the prophetic word or speak the prophetic word. Sometimes the psalmist who's being accompanied by a minstrel can speak the prophetic word. Now, most of you, of course, are familiar with Elisha calling for a minstrel. Then it says the hand of the Lord came upon him and he began to prophesy. We also know in 1 Samuel chapter 10 that Saul, who was just had just been anointed as the first king of Israel, met a company of prophets coming down from a high place with psalteries and, and instruments 
prophesying. So evidently in Israel, the, 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 one, of the, one of the ways that the prophetic was developed uh, through the ministry of Samuel was by the use of musical instruments and musicians. There were a lot of prophetic musicians, um, which is often not expected today. But we need to see more of that today. Not just people who play instruments, musicians in the church, but those who can prophesy when they're playing. They can, they can flow prophetically. Um, activate more musicians in the prophetic. That's a vision that I have as we go around doing uh, different prophetic activations. I don't have my book here. I have a book called Prophetic Activation. And um, it's about activating people in the prophetic. Um, we need more psalmists that can sing prophecy, that can prophesy during the worship. Not just sing some rehearsed songs, but can actually flow prophetically when the spirit of worship comes and the spirit of prophecy comes. Uh, because musicians, these, these, these prophets, these seers, prophesy with musical instruments accompanying them. So the musical instrument can actually stir the prophet. It actually causes the hand of the Lord to come upon the prophet. We need to see more of this in our worship. I think much of the worship in America and around the world is limited because it's primarily pre-programmed. The songs that are rehearsed, they sing them two or three, maybe four songs, stop the service or transition to the announcements or the offering. Uh, and there's very few churches that move strongly in the prophetic doing worship because the psalmists and the minstrels have not been developed in the prophetic. We say, well, how can they do that if they're not prophets? Well, many of them are prophets and many of them are filled with the Holy Spirit, which again is the doorway into the prophetic realm. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your servants and handmaidens shall prophesy. So being spirit-filled uh, means that you should flow prophetically to some degree. It doesn't make you a prophet, but you should flow prophetically to some degree, being filled with the Holy Ghost. It's more than just speaking in tongues. Remember Acts 19, when Paul laid hands on those, those Ephesian believers, they spoke in tongues and prophesied. They spoke in tongues and prophesied. So be, being spirit-filled people, what you call it, Pentecostal, charismatic, um, full gospel, you should flow prophetically if you're spirit-filled. Uh, the Bible says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. So singing is a part of being spirit-filled, especially singing prophetically. And then, of course, the musicians playing good, strong minstrels. We have we have a our, our church our musicians. Our band is called the ASAP Band. We're called the they call the ASAP Band. They flow with with the sounds. Uh, they come and they begin to play, and um then and often it's not rehearsed. They just begin to play. And then our, our lead psalmist, Kathy Summers, begins to sing prophetically the songs that God gives us. Um, I think one of one of our the moderator says in Clubhouse, Octavia Barnes says, We sing songs from the sky. I like that. Sing songs from heaven. Sing songs from the sky. Doesn't mean that rehearsed songs or songs written don't come from heaven. You can get a song from heaven and write it and sing it and rehearse it. I'm not against that. But the, but the Bible also says, sing unto the Lord a new song. And um, there's a prophetic flow that goes along with music and musical instruments that you sometimes don't see in churches that are supposed to be spirit-filled. And um, that's something that we need to change. Because when you flow prophetically in worship, it has the same benefits as prophecy, edification, exhortation, comfort, healing, deliverance, refreshing, life. Courage, boldness, direction, knowledge, insight. As a matter of fact, David said this, I will open my dark sayings upon the harp. The musical instrument in the book of Psalms was used to open the parables of God, the dark sayings of God. It releases God's wisdom. Proverbs chapter one, to understand a proverb, the words of the wise and their dark sayings, their hidden sayings. So it, it opens up hidden things. It releases a new realm of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding when you operate and flow in this way. Remember, Chenaniah, um, the, the, David's head singer, is called the master of the song or the master of prophecy or the master of the burden. That's really what the word song is. 
the master of the song, song, Hebrew word Masa, M-A-S-S-A, -S -S -A, which means burden or prophecy. So the, his head singer was prophetic to sing the, the, the song of the Lord, probably accompanied by musicians. And musicians and psalmists work together to create a prophetic atmosphere. And there are many miracles, breakthroughs, healings, uh, refreshing mysteries, wisdom that is released during this time. It just takes you into another realm of worship and glory. It really brings the glory of God in. So this is something that's very important. Study um, First Chronicles chapter 25. If you want more understanding of Asaph, order my book called The Spirit of Asaph on Amazon that are going to Asaph, not only in this chapter, but as, 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 as that name comes up uh, throughout the Bible. Asaph also uh, wrote some of the Psalms. Uh, other than David. David didn't write all the Psalms in, in the book of Psalms. Some were written by Asaph. And um, and so it, it, it's important that we walk in this. And musical instruments are very important. Anointed music, anointed minstrels, keyboards, different stringed instruments, uh, the harp, the, the piano, the violin. These instruments really, really stir um, this anointing. And um, so let's move in that. Remember, the piano is a stringed instrument. Uh, the harp, their strings. And um, David talked about uh, playing, uh, worshiping God with the stringed instruments, the strings. So and it's it's very important to the prophetic. And then we have anointed people playing, anointed ministers that can release that sound. Uh, it, it really creates a prophetic atmosphere. Then we prophesy corporately. We sing corporate songs over the people. The people are blessed, refreshed, healed, delivered. Uh, it is really, really an amazing time of worship that we need to cultivate more in our spirit-filled churches, our charismatic, full gospel Pentecostal churches who believe in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Well, that's it for today. Don't forget to register for Master the Prophetic. We'll be talking more about the prophetic next week, beginning Monday. You go to MasterTheProphetic.com. Also, don't forget to sow your seeds. Uh, last time, you can do it in the month of January tomorrow. The beginning of the new month, I'll be challenging people or monthly partners with me to sow your seed uh, for the month of February as we continue to move forward in 2024. The year of more, the year of more. May the Lord give you more in 2024. More doors, more favor, more grace, more wisdom. Don't forget Saturday, 3821 South Michigan at 2 p.m. I'm going to be um, putting these keys in your hands and, and challenging you with the keys that God has given you to begin to use them to unlock, unlock things that have been locked up in your life. We're going to be doing that Saturday, 3821 South Michigan Crusaders Church. I'll be there. The ASAP band and Prophetess Kathy Summers Kelly will be ministering as well. You see a demonstration of what we do every week in our church with prophetic worship. If you never experienced it before, it is really, really or something that's very phenomenal and very unusual when it comes to worship. Okay, we're going to continue this conversation in Clubhouse. And as always, in departing until tomorrow morning on the porch on Facebook Live. Thank you for sharing the broadcast. Thank those who gave as well through the stars here on Facebook Live. That's next to the heart and like button. I forgot to mention that as well. You can give that way as well. Thank you so much. And as always in departing, until you hear from me again uh, tomorrow morning, God bless you and double shalom. God bless.